Maybe it's I'm on the five weight last Look at there. The we doubled up. No, you got a big white bass. The bigger the bigger white bass are coming deeper. They're definitely deeper. Look at that. Look at First that. fish. Alright, I've got I've got number whatever on. Forty four, I think. Forty five. Oh, and he's wrapped me up too. I'll God pitch. dang it. Well, I got so one fly. On a five weight and a seven weight. Oh yeah. That's crazy. Ah, dogs. What time it is, boys and girls? It's white bass fishing time. It's the spawning run is upon us. Uh, hasn't started yet, but it is right at the beginning. And uh, buddy J Mo's out there looking. Ray's out there looking. Testing the water, so to speak. We've had a lot of rain, and uh, this season's getting started off right, best I can tell. So, in order to form a more perfect union between uh, the fly and the fish, I'm going to show you how to make a mo better and a way mo better fly. You start with a white. 164th ounce or 132nd ounce crappie jig. This is the mainstay of the white bass run for many, many, many uh, anglers uh, when you're talking about catching these fish as they come up in the creeks because what they're eating is small and mostly white. I don't know why white works so good, but it does. Just ask fishy techs. But anyway, let's get started. Like said, this is nothing but a plain white crappie jig. They run through the water, hook up just like that. You tie it on right there and it stays oriented in the water just like that. We're taking advantage of that, but we're also taking care of a deficiency. A deficiency in these things fall apart like nobody's business. So, this J-Mo is basically the one who started this uh, you know it takes a good while to tie a, a magical clouser and in the early spring there's hardly anything that works better than a lightly weighted jig and you can throw that with your fly rod pretty easy a five weight fly rod will toss that around just fine it's one it's 132nd ounce you can go down to a 164 ounce uh, and that that's probably as good as any but all you're going to do is you're going to fortify this fly that was the that was the first intent and that included just going like this getting your thread started and capturing all that material and that was it that's the original mo better nothing else done to it other than securing this and then you go ahead and whip finish it you know and get it knot it maybe put a little dot of super glue right here and it doesn't take much once it comes out it doesn't take much that is all you actually have to do which makes this one of the cheapest flies you'll ever make <laughs> okay so let's say Let's say that that's a mo better. Now let's make it way mo better. Because I like to make things. I like to make things. Period. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of elements to this fly that should entice a few more strikes. What I've got is some blue flash, and on the original JMO's magical clouser. He puts a couple of strands of this blue flash underneath the materials of his fly. And this is, this is you got to remember, this is the top because this thing runs hook up in the water. Alright, so we're going to tie that on there. And then one of the things I like to do is either take a magic marker, a sharpie marker. In this case, here's a red one. And I would actually add a little color to the bottom, 
just a small amount. You know, this makes it more like something I intentionally build. You know, I could I could do jigs. They're just as easy to make as a fly. It's just that these things are about maybe 10 cents a piece, 20 cents a piece, already painted, already ready to go. You could use them just like that. Now, the other thing I'm going to add to this series of way more bettas is a little bit of yellow marabou on the belly. And I mean just a tiny bit. I'm going to turn that thing up. It's nice to have a rotary vise. Not absolutely necessary. Put this right here and strap it in. Trying to make sure it stays on the bottom of the fly. So now I've got something that is way more better. It's been customized a little bit. It's not just a white jig. I'm going to put a nice little whip on this. This will do more to hold this jig together. Otherwise, they come unraveled, they fall apart, and then, then they're really useless. Our friend old Doug, Fishy Tex, uh, he'll take this jig just like it is. He uses conventional gear. Uh, he'll tie one of these on and throw four pound test, six pound test on a, an old close faced reel a lot of times. Uh, and he is an absolute master at catching white bass in the spring. He will fill his freezer. There you go. Little dot of super glue on those threads, and you got a very attractive fly. That ought to be a little better than just a white jig. I've done one other already. You can see that one. It's essentially the same thing. Just no red color. I'm going to whip up a bunch of these things. Because you got to have a bunch because you're going to lose a bunch of them. Especially if you're fishing Yawal Creek because the damn thing's full of timber and brush and fish. And this year we're going to have a heck of a run. This is all set up just perfectly. Uh, two weeks ago the lake was six feet below normal pool level. And as of this afternoon, it was within one and a half feet of normal pool level. Uh, and uh, it's raining again, so it's going to make pool. There we go. Alright, I'm going to speed through a bunch more of these. This is a very good way to get started in fly tying. Come on. 
thread it broke like that. <laughs> a little knob of super glue down inside there. Oh yeah. That's, that fly is way more better. Strong as the dickens. That one won't fall apart. But that'll be the one that catches the ground first. That's just a Essentially, that's a little bit of flash added to it, some extra thread along the body to hold it all together, and a hackle. That's a good version right there. I'll bet that works. I'll bet that works. Alright, that concludes this lesson.